The Morristown Green, a central park echoing with the footfalls of Washington and his compatriots during the Revolutionary War, is not merely a serene escape, but a living testament to the town's pivotal role in shaping our nation. Morristown's history seamlessly intertwines with every individual who grew up there, creating a childhood rich in the echoes of the past and a vibrant spirit of community carried forward by each successive generation. These are their stories. This is Beyond the Green. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Green, where we talk about the people and places of Morristown. My name is Peter, Morristown High School, class of 1990. Terry is on vacation this week. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome to the show 1984 alumnus, Steve Glenn. Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, it's our pleasure. So, Steve, there. So, you're a 1984 graduate of Morristown. Um, forty years. Forty years. Um, so, where'd you grow up in Morristown? Uh, we grew up in the uh, Washington's headquarters section. Okay. Of uh, Morristown, um, we lived on the corner of Olmstead and Georgian Road, um, right off of uh, Washington Avenue and off of columbia turnpike so right in the middle there yeah so there is a lot of glens there are a lot of glens so how many my, my when my my introduction to the high school uh in 1980 uh -huh. was oh you're a glen or oh another glen and geez how many glens are there <laughs> And that was, you know, the statement that preceded our names at uh, for every class, every mm -hmm. teacher, every, te uh, you know, the first day of class, uh, you know, and my brother and I were in the same, I have a twin brother, Michael, right. we were in the same grade, so he was getting it too. And in some classes, we got it together because we were in the same class. They allowed you to be in the same class? Yeah, back then. I don't know that they do that now, but back then. Interesting. Uh, probably like homeroom and gym. Okay. You know. Okay. So was there, so growing, so where'd you go? Elementary school was where for you? So in Morristown at that time, uh, we went to, um, for Michael and I, we went to Assumption Church, okay. Assumption School for kindergarten. Okay. And then we went to, George Washington School. Wow. Yeah. For classes one, two, and three. Okay. Um, nope. Excuse me. One and two. Okay. We went to Normandy Parkway for grade three. Sure. Okay. And then grade four, five, and six was back at George Washington hmm. uh, School because uh, the they at that point. Normandy Parkway became the uh, board of it. Yeah. So they weren't holding class. So we were like the last class to be there. Okay. And then we were the last class, the last graduating class um, in 1980 for Lafayette Junior High School. Wow. So we went there. We went there for seventh and eighth grade. Okay. Uh, and we were the last graduating class from Lafayette as a junior school. Because then it became another type of school, but it wasn't the junior school. Okay, okay. Because they also had uh, Freelingheisen for the Morris Plains uh, Borough and Morris, Morris Plains students and things. Yeah. So that yeah. became that became the only seventh and eighth grader class. Yeah. Okay. Or school. Okay. School. When when I so, when and then Morristown High from 1980 to 1984. Yeah. When when I hear people who've actually gone to George Washington, you know, I kind of, you know, it makes me smile because here's townhouses now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I it's, it, if you haven't lived, if you haven't been in school in town for a long time, you have no idea that you know, uh, on Morris Street, you when know, we were in uh, when we were in first and second grade. Yeah, um, they were building two eighty seven. Yeah, because 
287 wasn't there. And uh, the new Route 24 wasn't there. Was that wasn't there? It no. was. You know, it's what they call Route 124 now. Right. But it used to be Route 24. Yeah. Uh, or Madison Avenue. That, yeah. You know that run that runs in front of the uh, the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Back back then it was Morristown Memorial Hospital. Right. Now it's a uh, very long technical name. Yeah, but it'll it'll always be Memorial Hospital. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So when you so you get into high school, what kind of extra curricular activities did you take part of? So for me, I did. Um, I don't remember what I did in ninth grade. I don't think I really. I just kind of floundered around in ninth grade. Uh-huh. But tenth grade, I took on uh, um, being in the theater with uh, mm-hmm. my brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. uh, having been. You know, uh, Michael and I are number uh, six and seven of eight kids. Mm -hmm. So there were five kids before us and they were involved with the theater. So I got involved with that. And then for myself, I got involved with student government in my uh, in my sophomore year. And then as a junior year uh, and senior year, I was the student government treasurer for both years. Okay, Uh, And uh, that was sort of my thing i was doing student government whereas okay. my brother my brother was doing all the sports he was involved with baseball mm-hmm. uh, he was involved with uh, football he was the uh, quarterback uh, for a period of time and uh, i mean he was baseball football mm-hmm. yeah, i think those were pretty much the main ones and then there might have been some fill-ins here and there and he also did a couple of the theater productions yeah yeah um, so, so you know, you you. I kind of I kind of say this because I don't know kids that are at the high school now may not understand this. You know, growing up eighty through eighty four, especially being in high school, you know, we called about so much happened history wise when you when you think about it while you were in those four years. You know, you had the the first launch of the space shuttle. Charles and Diana got married. You had the 1980 Olympics. You had the 84 Olympics. Yep. And we had this little thing called the Cold War that was going on, you know, where there was a. And in Morristown at the time. Yeah. uh, We were uh, going to the school at the annex at Alexander Hamilton, which was across the street because the high school was going through a major renovation and remodel. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had the trailers in the back in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. So I had some classes in the school, some classes in the trailers, some classes across the street at Alexander Hamilton. It was a lot of back and forth yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, I think it was probably uh, late 83, but definitely early 84 mm-hmm. that we finally were in the high school yeah. full time. When you so when you finally got to go into the high school and it was completed, were you kind of how was it? Were you guys kind of shocked? Like, wow, this is nice. Well, we got to see it kind of as we were moving along because the school was never fully a hundred percent closed to us. Okay. Um, because we had classes still in the older part of the school. Okay. Um, the newer part of the for us at that time, the newer part of the school was they added the offices. Um, they added the atrium. Mm-hmm. So the the front door to the building used to bring you in and you'd have the senior stairs. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for, and I, you know, for years and years and years, we heard about the senior stairs from my older brothers and sisters. Um, but when the new school or the new part of the school was built, uh-huh. the senior stairs kind of got forgotten yeah. for a while Yeah, uh, because it was no longer the main entrance to the school. Okay. So, um, so just past the new part of the, the, the old part of the school, the new part of the school, mm-hmm. uh, they put in a new driveway. So that's where the buses let everybody off. And so you went in through the new part of the school and it was a huge uh, three-story or four-story mm-hmm. atrium yeah. uh, that you would go into and the offices, the principal's office and the secretaries and all that mm-hmm. were on the left-hand side of the building and on the right side of the building, um, that right hallway would take you into the old part of the school. Oh yeah. Okay. But at the very end of the atrium, all the way to the other side of the atrium on the corner was 
uh, a space that the uh, that SGO or student government organization took over, um, and we made it our headquarters, and we made it into a, uh, a store. The school store, yeah. The school store. I don't know if it's still there. Yeah, I think it is. And then so that so we were the first ones. So that was the first time it was there in 1984 and uh or 1983 84 i think it was and then that hallway uh just opposite the store would take you into the new part of the school yeah. and so into the, and so it's i mean it's i've been there in the last 40 years mm -hmm. but it probably hasn't it's probably been 10 years since i've been at the high school yeah and been well not i've been at the high school but inside the high school, because you know, got it. there's security. Got it. Yeah, I, I, it's security now, so you can't get in. But yeah. the <laughs> um, um, did you yep. guys did you guys know? I'm just curious. While it was being built, that there was going to be a pool. Yes. So when you finally see the pool, were you impressed by it? Like very. I mean, it was it was an Olympic sized pool. It was uh, really well done. Uh huh. Um, you could not know it because if you were in the new part of the building, all you smelt was, was chlorine. Chlorine, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was. It was in every hallway. Yeah, um, all the way up to the to the pool. But yeah, I mean, and it, and I mean, I, growing up at uh, on Olmstead Road, we had a pool. So yeah, for me, yeah. I was excited about the pool because I I was a water baby. I mean, I just loved being in the water. You couldn't get me out of the pool. Yeah. So um, I enjoyed it when I was while I was there. Okay. You know. Yeah, I, and I, you know, I remember that the new facilities, I mean, the old facilities were really, you know, pretty sad and old. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the yeah. new facilities, the bathrooms, the showers, um, all that area, it, it was nice. It was, you know. Yeah. It's nicer than some people's homes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure but, back know, in the time it was. And, and the, at that time, yeah. Yeah. You know. So let's um, let's talk about 40 year anniversary. I mean, reunion, I'm Crazy. sorry. Crazy. So, Crazy. 40 years since I graduated high school. Yeah. Where did the time go? Well, you know, yeah. I, I found myself uh, graduating from high school. Um, for me, I went to the County College of Morris for mm -hmm. a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just, you know, I, I was I was never a great student. <laughs> and I wasn't even, I was an even more terrible college student. And, uh, you know, the bug had gotten me and I wanted to go to work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had a full-time job uh, by the time I was two years out. Okay. And, and then part-time on the weekends doing uh, restaurants or mm -hmm. uh, diners or working, you know, just working all the time uh, to make money. And uh, um, the first couple of years after high school, um, because I was, I stayed home and all my other brothers and sisters, you know, my dad had uh six kids in college at the same time wow so we were all in various stages and various uh, uh ages and uh i was the designated driver so my dad would pay for the car or, and i would just have to put fuel in it uh, but he would let me use it all week so i could go to school mm -hmm. and go to work and go to my job and all the things extracurricular things that i needed to do but on friday night uh, it was my job to go get my brothers and sisters that were coming home from school. And so I would start at, you know, five o'clock at night and I wouldn't get home till 11, 1130 at night, uh, from picking up people at Rutgers, mm -hmm. uh, because we were at the Livingston college. We were at the Douglas college. My brother was at Mason, uh, gross, the arts college. Uh, and then I had to go, my brother, Michael was down at the time. It was called Trenton state college. Uh, it's the College of New Jersey now, I think. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, my brother Ted was at, uh, who's one year older than Michael and I, was at um, Kane College. So I was traveling on Friday nights, and then I would do the same. And then on Sunday, I would do the the opposite, take them all back. Yeah. Um, so that was that. Those were my, you know, Friday nights and Sundays. Um, and then I had to share the car with six, five or six people. And so it was always just chaotic, you know, <laughs> you know growing up, growing up with eight kids. It was, there was a lot, there was always something or five somethings going on in our household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My dad had a calendar for everybody to put their activities on. So he would know where everybody was at any given time. 
because uh, it was, you know, my dad and mom, uh, they were the original Uber drivers <laughs> until, uh, you know, we all got our license. And then as each kid got the license, they became the Uber driver, you know. Yeah. But we didn't get paid for driving. No. <laughs> but we got other perks. Yeah. So, so what do you think, what are you most looking forward to for this reunion? Well, I'm excited. Um, I was uh, lucky enough to be the chair for the 30th reunion. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to have that at the Madison Hotel um, in in town. Um, people that had graduated with us, the Keller family, mm -hmm. used to own uh, Rod's Ranch House. Uh, and the uh, Rod's Ranch House, what was it called? Rod's Ranch House and the Madison Hotel. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it holds a lot to my family because... Uh, my brother, Walter, my brother, Ted, my brother, Michael, myself, uh, my sister, Kelly, my sister, Aaron, uh, six, six out of eight kids all worked at the, the Madison Hotel wow. or the Rod Steakhouse at some point in time. And um, Robbie Keller graduated with Michael and I. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Stephen Keller graduated with Shannon um, or somewhere in between. I mean, we just they they had kids the same age as us. And we all went to school together. Yeah. Uh, so that was uh, so it was nice to do that and have. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I know that they've had multiple. If you go on our Facebook page, um, MHS class of 1984 40 year reunion, uh, 2024. Yeah. On Facebook, yeah. you can see pictures from the 10th reunion. Um, I missed that one. Not sure why, but I didn't I didn't hear about it. So they had a 10th and a 20th. I didn't know about those, but I found out about the 30th reunion and somehow I became the chair. <laughs> and so between myself and a few other people uh, from class, Simone Giswaldo, who's still involved, mm -hmm. Kate Farmagenic, mm -hmm. who's still involved, um, Alan Pavel, uh, Kizzy Wilkinson, Andrea Taylor, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of people, Felicia Beattie. Uh, still involved and still helping out um, with the 40th reunion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know that they tried to have a 35th reunion, but that didn't work out for whatever reason. I wasn't involved um, myself. I was going through a uh, medical situation at the time and uh, couldn't be involved. And so then here we are at the 40th reunion and trying to gather people together and hoping someone else would take the reins and uh, schmuck of the year. Here I am. Uh, you can knock that out. Uh, so 40, here I am at the 40th reunion being the chair again. Um, and, uh, but it's exciting. I love it. Yeah. Um, I've been involved with, um, many, uh, groups over the years and, um, you know, we used to put on these nonprofit, uh, get togethers and camping weekends. And, uh, I belong to a group in, uh, met in Stillwater, New Jersey for 28 years mm -hmm. that I was involved and they've been doing it for, um, God, it's almost uh, 60 years that it's been going on. Um, so, uh, helping out, putting the event together. So I had, uh, ex I have experience in putting together these gatherings, these type of, um, where you find yourself on a committee of four, uh, putting together uh, an event for, hopefully as many people as you can get. Yeah. Yeah. So just a, a quick rundown. Uh, sure. This is going to take place um, Columbus Day weekend. Yeah. So this, this coming October, um, it's the, on the 10th of October. Uh, we're going to be at the football game for the Morristown High School Colonials. We're going to call it the Thursday Night Lights. Mm -hmm. uh, it's generally the Friday Night Lights, but Friday is Yom Kippur. Um, so the high school is closed. Um, so there won't be any events going on that particular day. Um, but we'll be at the high school football game, Thursday night lights. And then maybe, you know, a couple of us will show up for the game. Um, there will be an announcement uh, that we're there and we're celebrating our 40th reunion that weekend um, from the, um, uh, the uh, what, do they, what do they call it? The, uh, the scoreboard? Scoreboard, yeah. Okay, so we had a conversation. I had a uh, email back and forth with Kevin Rooney at the high school 
and he told me about the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation does uh, tours of the high school. So um, we set ourselves up for a tour on Saturday morning, um, October 12th at 10 a.m. We're gonna tour the high school. Um, so if you're class of 1984 or 83 or 85 or 87, all within that, come and join us for the tour. Um, so, and then uh, Saturday evening, we're gonna be at the Famished Frog for the reunion. Uh, we have one of the rooms in the back. We may be sharing it with another school. Uh, Bailey Ellard is also having uh, a reunion that night for their 40th. So, but it's a huge room. So we might be, we're either gonna be sharing the room or we're going to be separate. We'll find out when we get there. Uh, if it's a nice night, it's October, but if it's a nice night, they said we could be outside in the pavilion as well. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes and how the, if the weather is working with us. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna start at seven o'clock for the 40th reunion for the class of 1984. And we're gonna run through to 10 o'clock with uh, three hours of nonstop appetizers, hors d'oeuvres, uh, food, pizza, bagels, hot dog, you name it. All the appetizers you can think of. Um, I've been assured by their manager that they're, they're just nonstop coming mm -hmm. from the kitchen until everybody is full. Um, there'll be a cash bar. We'll have our own bar set up and our own bartender. So we don't have to go to the main restaurant for that. And um, we're going to have, uh, we're going to honor our fallen or classmates that have passed away. Um, we're going to have a memorial for them. Uh, we're also going to, you know, have a few mentions of people in the group and people that have come and, you know, if they want to share their, you know, last 40 years with us, uh, we're going to do that. And uh, we're going to drink a little and not drink a little and just catch up with each other. And then at 10 o'clock when the um, food stops, we're gonna open it up for other classes to join us. So mm -hmm. if you went to high school from 1980 to 1987, uh, 88, you know, you're welcome to join us. Uh, we'll all toast each other, uh, toast Morristown High School uh, and uh, either Remember fondly or unfondly? Was that a word? Uh, we'll remember fondly our high school uh, adventures and our high school journey. Uh, we'll pay uh, homage to some of our past teachers and and uh, again our classmates that have they're no longer with us and uh, just try to have as good a great time as we can. I mean, if it's anything like the thirtieth, we had a fantastic time at the thirtieth. Um, at the hotel and then afterwards because we all you know dressed down those of us that were staying in the hotel mm -hmm. or those of us that lived locally uh, we all got you know dressed down and uh, did a tour of town and uh, ended up at uh, an alumni's house um, Victor's house Victor Robinson's house mm -hmm. and, and it was just I mean we partied until four o'clock in the morning wow and let me tell you there you know a lot of us haven't seen four o'clock in the morning in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, myself personally, I go to bed at the time I used to go out. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's been a, it's, it's been an awesome and amazing uh, opportunity for me to, you know, help put this together. And uh, I've had great help from the committee members and uh, we have a, a company that we've been utilizing for the last 10 years mm -hmm. called reunion db uh so basically reunion database um so they're at uh, www.reuniondb d is in david b is in boy reuniondb.com you can go on there and you can search by first name last name maiden name uh nickname you can search your profile and you can fill in your uh, address information, your phone information, your current um, email uh, information, and then uh, 
you can go on there, you can buy your tickets for the reunion. You can go on there and check in on your past classmates and see where people are and what they're doing in the world. There's a section that you can fill in uh, a biography of yourself and, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, upgrade it so or update it so, you know, a classmate can reach out to you. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. People you haven't people you haven't talked to in forty years. Yeah, you know, or zero. And you know, Steve, I just want to mention that we're <laughs> we are going to uh, we're going to be tagging along with you that whole weekend. Yes, absolutely. And we're going to be documenting all the events for you and your class, yeah. so that there is an actual living and breathing documentation of everybody who's. Not only in your class. Behave, behave. Yeah, uh, uh, the the camera never lies, and uh, so not only we can document not only you know your class, but also those from other classes who um, who decide to show up for the event. Um, so let me just move into the last segment of this, sure. uh, where we ask, we do the five simple questions. Um, so for you personally. Who in high school influenced you the most? George Bellis. He was a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, he taught uh, business accounting. He was the SGO, our student government mm -hmm. uh, teacher liaison, or I don't know what the director. I don't know what they called him. Okay. Back then. The liaison for the, the for the students. Okay. Uh, but George Bellis was uh, instrumental in getting me involved with going into business myself and mm -hmm. um yeah he was and uh yeah he was a big influence on me and uh you know somebody that i, I would wouldn't mind seeing again i have spoken to him mm -hmm. i it, i did invite him to our 30th mm -hmm. uh but he said uh he he politely declined Okay. And said that he had been to enough reunions <laughs> okay fair enough fair which enough. i which was fair because you yeah. know I, I hadn't seen him in 30 years. He's probably been to a hundred reunions. Yeah. So, uh, but he's, he was a, he was a fan favorite and, uh, uh, or a school favorite, um, for many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody looked up to him and, uh, and, uh, he was a, he was a, he was a nice man and, and, a, and a good man. And, and, and he really took time out to mentor me and help me out. So, nice. Yeah. So, what was your first concert? ZZ Top. Where'd you see them? Uh, at the Brendan Byrne Arena. Wow. Which is not there anymore. Well, it's the Izod Center oh, now. Or is it something else? Yeah, Izod. Yeah. Yeah. It changed names a few times before yeah. Yeah. it became the Izod. But yeah, yeah. Brendan Byrne Arena in, at the Meadowlands. Yeah. yeah. And, and for those of you who haven't been back to New Jersey recently, uh, the Azad Center is slated to be demolished. Yeah. And they plan on building a new convention center there yeah. uh, in time for the 20, 2026 uh, World Cup. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if somebody asked you for a restaurant recommendation in Morristown, where would you send them? Well, the Famish Frog is a place that my wife and I tend to go to when we're in town. Okay. Um, everybody kind of goes to, well, it's called the Famished Frog, but, you know, we all call it the frog. Right, right. Uh, and it's been well known for years and years and years. Um, I got to say, you know, Rod's, uh, Rod's mm -hmm. Steakhouse, they're actually in Common Station. Yeah. Because I, mean, I started working there when I was 15 years old. Wow. As, as, a, as a salad boy. <laughs> yeah. I don't... I don't think that's politically correct anymore, but you know, <laughs> maybe maybe a salad person. Right. Uh, but yeah, at 15 years old, I was hustling uh, Fridays and Saturday nights, filling up the salad bar. Yeah. Uh, and it was a it was it was a challenge because people like their salad. Hundred percent. And uh, they had two of them: one on the one on the in the main restaurant mm -hmm. downstairs, and one in the Whiskey Palace upstairs. Mm -hmm. and so I was getting my exercise on those stairs. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, I have a, a, a kinship with them. Um, 
and the Keller family, they no longer own it, but mm -hmm. they owned it for a long, long, long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, I really don't know of, I mean, we used to, my, as a family, yeah. Cutters, Bar and Absolutely. Grill. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cutters, Bar and Grill was, I mean, that's where my parents went to, to every Friday night. Mm -hmm. at, you know, not when we were little kids, but. Um, when we got older, uh -huh. uh, my parents would make a point of going out to dinner on Friday nights yeah. cutter after working a long week yeah. and they deserved it, you know? Yeah. They deserved it. Yeah, and definitely. So cutters was the spot and, you know, eight kids, it's a little, it's a little hard yeah. to go anywhere with eight kids, yeah. uh, with 10 people. Um, but they would, every once in a while, mom and dad would take us all to cutters. And yeah, I remember um, they used to serve lasagna and uh, veal parm and yeah. chicken parm in a metal can uh, metal uh skillet yeah and uh so i have i mean god that's going back that's going back 50 yeah that's 50 years i mean i'm 58 50 i'll be 59 this year i mean that's yeah going back 50 50 years yeah. sure. i know you know before and we... i have fond you know very fond memories uh, I mean, it was dark. It was dank. It was. It, it was, was classy. Loud. It was classy, it was Steve. Absolutely old school Italian restaurant. Yeah, and, and what with the with the red booths and uh, and we took up the one in the corner that had a booth that went in a U shape. Yeah, because we had so many people. Yeah, and what many people may not realize, you know, before we started um, recording here, uh, we were talking about Verilli's, and what a lot of people don't realize. Oh, yeah is that Verilli's made all the pie shells for the pizza. Absolutely. So yeah. if, for those of you who want a Cutter's pizza, go down to Verilli's because they sell the pie shells and pick up some pie shells. I actually... When we, weren't, when we weren't at Cutter's, we were at Verilli's buying the pie shells, buying the sauce, buying the cheese, mm -hmm. um, buying the condiments, everything that we needed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but for 10 people, you know, my dad was getting four shells. Cause of course, yep. There was a lot of kids. Yeah. No, I get it. And that was, uh, you know, like a Saturday nights. Yeah. After all the football games, after all the baseball games, after all the extracurricular activities. Yeah. You know, we'd get home and we'd make all the pizzas. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd all be sitting around, uh, you know, the family room or, well, most of the time, the dining room as a family. Yeah. You know, as we got older, it was getting harder and harder to have family meals. And so my dad tried to do it on Sunday nights, but, you know, we were all going in eight different directions. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So it was nice when we could all, you know, come together and, and, and have a meal. Yeah. hundred sure. percent. So do you think if somebody who's never been to Morristown, if they said to you, if you ran into, you were traveling somewhere and says, Hey, I've heard of Morristown. What can you tell me about it? How would you, in, in one paragraph, how, how would you, what would you say about Morristown? It was a great place to grow up. It was a great place to, uh, to, uh, you know, we, that was back in the day when, you know, the, uh, the lights coming on in the street was your, was your notification to go home. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, yeah uh ipads for entertainment we had to entertain ourselves mm -hmm. you know, we were out in the street playing we were at the we were at the park we were sledding at uh twin oaks uh tennis courts the the hill at uh twin oaks is mm -hmm. where we, you know for my neighborhood that's where we all went to and you know you cut through your neighbor's yards to get everywhere and uh you know um it was just the quintessential historic there's a lot of history yeah. in uh, you know the colonial revolution yeah. went right through morristown and actually stayed there for a few years yeah so i mean yeah. there's a lot of history in morristown um hence there are you know morristown colonials mm -hmm. uh, for all of our football and yeah. uh, sports and you know active uh, activities after school if you were a colonial you're once a colonial always a colonial Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I mean, even for myself, uh, you know, fond memories of uh, of uh, growing up in a large family, the parades in Morristown, 
Um, you know, everybody knew everybody. Um, you knew all your neighbors' names. You knew your neighbors' neighbors. You knew people two blocks away, three blocks away. I mean, I used to know everybody in the neighborhood. Um, as a kid, I was I had a nickname as Super Salesman <laughs> because I would sell my brothers and sisters, but even people in the neighborhood, if they had something to sell, I would go around the neighborhood and sell their things. And so, you know, people would open up their door and they'd be like, what are you selling now, Steve? And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and I missed that. I, I used to, and that's how, but for me, that was, you know, I became the mayor of Morristown uh, just being around so many people all sure. the time. Mm -hmm. And then later on in life, I've carried that with me throughout my life that I've just always been outgoing. I've always been able to talk to people. Yeah. I've always been able to, uh, you know, convey myself and my thoughts and my actions and anything with people. It's just Morristown was my, you know, was my foundation. It was mm -hmm. my, my beginning. And, uh, and I'm never too far away from Morristown. I mean, I did leave when I got older and it was time for me to, to, to uh, leave the nest, so to speak. Um, and I did, but, uh, I was never too far away. Um, the farthest I've gotten is Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Um, but you know, uh, our families used to, uh, meet on Cape Cod in summer in Cape Cod. So I had an opportunity to live there for five years, but I came back to Morristown or came back to New Jersey and lived within, you know, 30 minutes of Morristown, yeah. um, yeah. brothers and sisters in Morristown still to this day so you know we have a a, a, a great history in morristown mm -hmm. for the family so finally um in 2024 steve could go back to the night before this podcast is not long enough <laughs> well if 2024 steve can go back to the night before 1984 Steve's graduation and leave him a note what would you tell your younger self wow Just, uh, so many things to I would say don't waste time time is fleeting time is short Enjoy the people you love. Uh, spend as much time with them as you possibly can. Uh, I I have a saying that I use a lot. If I knew then what I know now, whoa, um, I wouldn't have been as uh, immature, I think. I wouldn't have been as uh, fleeting. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have been as sad as I have been at certain times in life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and pay attention to your mental health. Well, said. I think well, that's, said. I think that's what I would have told myself. Yeah. Um, you know, this year I'm celebrating uh, 30 years of sobriety in January. Uh, Congratulations. So I did go through a difficult time, obviously, um, but I got into uh, sobriety and I got involved with Alcoholics Anonymous, mm -hmm. got involved mm -hmm. with a program of living, and I have been living ever since. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very grateful. Yeah. Very grateful. Yeah. Well, listen, Steve, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we will do a separate episode just on the reunion and yeah. hopefully bring some more people on the class on before the reunion happens. Uh, sure. But I'm going to share your um, link on the reunion page if that's okay yeah i appreciate that and and let people know to reach out to you yep and and uh i think a few people will do it yeah yeah i think it'd be great we should get steve brown to do it for sure absolutely <laughs> do so, you know him i know i know who he is yeah i don't you know, know of him, yeah yeah I, I know of him yeah well go on the facebook you'll see him on there he's yeah he's quite the character yeah in all in a good way yeah yeah absolutely 100 percent so listen again, once again, thanks for coming on. Uh, Thank you. For, for those of you watching, uh, you got a See couple. You at the reunion. What's that? 
I'll see you at the reunion. 100%. <laughs> so, Steve, on behalf of myself and my brother, uh, you've been watching Beyond the Green. Until next time, folks, be good to each other, and we'll see you all soon.